Believe it or not, storing your compressor in the middle of your workshop is not a good plan. After we got it off the truck, we sat it here and it's been sitting like this for maybe two weeks now. My sister's boyfriend was trying to work on their friend's car and they were trying to use air tools with one of them little pancake compressors. It did not go well. The plan here is I'm gonna put this in a shed right behind that wall back there, but I haven't gotten to that yet and it'll probably be a little bit till I work on that. So today I'm gonna to get this thing operational. I'm gonna, one, make sure it works. I need to wire it up uh, and plug it into the wall over here and then also get an air fitting that'll adapt the air outlet here to just my simple air hose that I have. It won't be getting its max potential out of it because apparently this thing can put out 31 CFM and I'm sure my little air hose can't even let that much out, but it'll let me use it for most of the stuff or really anything that I can do at the moment. And then it'll just be a little bit noisy in the corner when it runs. Apparently it's silent, silent tech, so it should be less loud, but uh, I'm a little skeptical. It's pretty big. Seems like it'll be pretty noisy. And then I'm gonna just put it in the corner so it's in a useful spot but a little bit in the way for what I want that spot to be used for and that'll motivate me to get the shed made to put it outside in its own enclosure. So we'll see how this goes. Hopefully everything goes as planned and everything's operational with this thing. It looked like it arrived in good shape but you never know. So the first thing I'm going to check is the air fitting. I think it's a one inch fitting. I'm not good with the different pipe types so I'm gonna to have to double check with the company what exactly this is. One inch national pipe thread. One inch national pipe thread. The other thing I'm gonna to need to do is wire this up. This is 220 single phase power. They need a 50 amp circuit, which I have already set up. Plugging it right into the wall for now. Eventually it's gonna go into a secondary breaker box. According to the manual, there's the diagram here. I just need to put two hots up here and then connect a ground wire to the back with a six gauge wire. That should be pretty easy and then plug it into the wall. So I'll need to get the correct plug for that too today, but it should be pretty straightforward. I think I'll get this thing running in a couple hours. And I'm back. And this stuff here only cost me $250. Good God, stuff's expensive these days, but had to be done. I needed it and that's as cheap as I could get it. This is especially janky. But right now I need to go from this one inch uh, MPT all the way down to a uh, quarter inch and uh, that's what they had at Lowe's to make it happen. Ooh, I think this alone costs like $75. I also got another set of these high flow fittings uh, to give it the best chance to get as much flow out of it as I can until I get an official setup. But let's get started here. Put it all together. This here was like 65 bucks. Might have been able to buy it cheaper on Amazon, but it's a good brand and that's how much it costs at the electric supply store. I believe that's my ground and then the black or the white, it doesn't matter, will go to uh, the two hot since it's a 220. Oh god, I'm reading the directions. Okay, so that's what it's showing. Ah, good. Gives me some lengths here to do it right. On that good. Now I'll prepare the other side. So those are roughly ready. Now for this monstrosity, I'm going to put uh, pipe tape on all the different threads and hopefully it won't leak. I'll test it. Okay. This is a perfect excuse to use my new Knipex wrenches. They're really nice. I've used them a few times now, but let's see how they work. When using thread seal, you want to make sure that you put it in the direction that you're turning so that when you close the fitting, it actually is not undoing itself. It wants to kind of go in more. So it's righty tighty and you also don't want to get it on the end of the thread. And it's good to wrap it around a few times. You can just pull this stuff, but I like to cut it because it makes me feel like I'm more official. You see now that ends coming out here. So when I bring it in, it leaves it. Is it fully unwrapped now? 
I love when my dad just wanders in and starts talking to me when he knows I'm trying to make a video. Okay, let's continue. Okay, let's throw all this on. Huh, what's he doing here? Okay, hopefully this all works well. Okay. Of course, back threading it's probably not good. <sighs> really want it 90. I think that'll be good enough. Hopefully it works. Okay, now it's time to wire this to the unit. Should just be this top one here and here. And it doesn't matter what side the wire goes to uh, because they're both hot. Just for consistency, I'll put the white side to this one and the black to this one, even though it's back here, just because, I don't know, it seems right to me. In addition, there's a, a ground in the back here. I will attach this ground wire to the back of the panel. So one of the things I'm seeing here is that like they have a little, I think that's called a ferrule to get it back there. And if these were solid wires I was working with, I don't think it would really matter because you just go right down on the solid wire. But in my case, it's not a solid wire. I have stranded, they have little connections on them. But the problem is all these different connections are made for like the yellow ones are typically, I think 10 to 12 uh, gauge wire, mine are six, so it's a lot bigger. I'm gonna see if I can find something more official. You could probably tin the ends of them. Is it that way? That would probably be sufficient. And I'm sure for my temporary wiring that just putting the strands in there and clamping it down would probably be just fine. But I like to do things more official, so I'm gonna see if I can uh, find something that, that does that, that's not a million dollars, or I'm just gonna have another piece of equipment laying around that'll get occasional use. So I'll be back when I figure that out. And I'm back with just this little guy. I went to electrical supply store and uh, they just ended up giving this to me. It was like a $3 part and they said it's not worth the trouble to put it on my card. Plus I just spent like 150 bucks on a little bit of stuff from them uh, the day before. That all kind of jerry-rig on to the end of it. They said you could solder it if you want or you can just use a vise and, and, and put it on but the correct tool is like a fancy hydraulic thing and that's way too much money and they don't even sell them. Uh, you'd have to order it. So I'm just gonna make that work for the grounding lug and then Upon thinking about it some more, you know, this wire is really too big to go in on one side or the other. So what I'm going to do, instead of uh, trying to get a ferrule that does it, I'm going to split the, the connection and put it on both sides. Because essentially, I'll try and show it to you here. Essentially in here, there's a little like wedge and the bolt goes down the middle and there's really not room for the whole wire on one side or the other. So I'm gonna split it to get it down there. And since I have this little off piece from making the other end, I'm gonna experiment with that before I try to do it with the real wire. Yeah. I like it. I like it. A Little bit of time to think while I was driving around. I talked to both electrical supply places and the one guy said, yeah, you can buy this tool and it's, you know, it's hydraulic and it's expensive. Since you're only doing one, just do it some other way. The, the other place said, I, I told them, I said, I'm not an electrician. I don't know a lot about it. I know how to do it at the very highest premium level conceptually. And I know how to do it not right at all, but I don't know where's the bare minimum and what's good enough. And he said, well, you know, really you're overthinking it. Just put the wires in and tighten it down. It'll be fine. He said I could solder it if I want to to tin the ends, but I, I think this actually will work, just splitting it. Because that was my concern, because it's a little wedge, and especially with this little red wire back here, that it would wedge it to one side and then this wouldn't get wedged at all. But I think now with splitting it, that should work really well. That's solid, that little thing is solid. I think it'll work just fine with the further red one too. So, I'll do that now. Good, goes in the hole. Okay, so that'll work, actually. And I'll trim these at the end because <clears throat> ideally, at least in my mind, I prefer not to let uh, the wire sit right on the, the side of the box. Uh, that's the whole point of the ground. So if it wears through, 
you know, ground out and, and everything, but why <clears throat> risk having it there in the first place? And since this thing will have, you know, a fair amount of fi vibration, that could slowly wear that away on the top of the box. So these will make shorter, but I think this will work pretty good. And I gotta definitely go find uh, the proper connection in here to uh, tighten that in. Okay, so I just got the part that I need. It's this little doohickey, but life is not simple. The hole down here that it's going through measures about an inch. And the previous hole that I knocked out was 0.87 something. So that implied to me that the hole was really a seven eighths, which apparently doesn't exist, but one inch was one inch and that they sell. So I went to the store and bought, well, what I thought was a one inch hole connector, but uh, yeah, that's not how they work apparently. Good thing I just bought these on a whim. This is the three quarter inch hole one. This actually is the correct size for this hole. You know, it's a little bit off, but that's just because I guess they have some play in it. But uh, that wasn't intuitive at all. You know, if I was an electrical guy, this would probably be pretty obvious, but uh, you know, I'm just working at it. It seems to be common sense, except when it's not. But uh, yeah, so when the hole measures an inch, it's really like three quarters. So that was something I learned today. It must be going by this inside diameter, which still isn't right because my wire's over three quarters of an inch here and it, it will fit through that hole. I checked it with another piece. So I don't really understand what these numbers are supposed to mean. They're like, in general, it's three quarters of an inch. Ugh. But I've got the part so I can do this now. Okay, that'll be much better. Perfect. Then that'll clamp down in there. These will go where they need to go. Perfect, perfect, perfect. I'm going to crimp that somewhere else. Okay, my understanding of how these things crimp on here is it's sort of a square pattern uh, and does it from two sides, of course, at the same time. And then possibly even has like a, a little feature that pushes in at one spot or maybe multiple. So I'm gonna just try using my little vise here and see if I can clamp it on that way. So it's already worked. Hopefully I won't overdo it here. I'm gonna try going the other way. My guess is this will undo it, but we'll see here. It doesn't seem like it's coming off, so that's good. And for one time doing it, that'll be perfectly good. Being that it's a ground wire, I'm not concerned about covering that up. I could put a little piece of shrink wrap on it, but it's a grounding wire, so no need for that. And for extra feeling good, I'm gonna hit that with something right here. I don't know, that seems pretty official to me. Oh yeah, you'd think I knew what I was doing. Okay, let's put this in now. Should be everywhere we need it. Okay, in theory, should plug right in and work now. Uh, so just to recap, I grounded in the back. I put one of the hots to this uh, L2 marker on here and the other hot to this L1 marker here. Reconnected the wires that were already in those holes and uh, that should be it. Okay, so in theory, I've got my electrical hooked up. I've got an air connection hooked up. I do have to put this little auto drain on, but I'll do that when it's over there because there's a reason they left it off. It's very fragile where it connects to if you're moving this thing around. Now I need to move this over in the corner somewhere. I'm sure I can't just push it, but I'm gonna try and obviously this is not gonna work. It's 1100 pounds or so. Yeah, not happening. So the options are 
I get the forks for the tractor and kind of lift it up and drag it around, bring it over there. But first I'm gonna try if I can get it on some of our dollies. Theoretically, one dolly could hold the whole thing, but I'll try and move it with a little bit of assistance from the dollies uh, rather than the forks, because I'd have to move a lot of stuff to get the tractor in here to maneuver it around. Let's see how it goes. So here's what I'm thinking. I've got four dollies, uh, which is 4,000 pounds capacity, way more than this is. Uh, this shipping weight was uh, 11 or 1,200 pounds. And I'm gonna put the dollies with some boards through it, jack the board up so I can rest it down on the dolly, and then it should be sitting on the dolly. We'll see here. One of the problems is I can't use the board in a vertical orientation because they won't fit through the fork holes. So I might use two or three. We'll see how it, if it seems like it's flexing or anything, but it'll be right at the end. So there really won't be too much pressure on it. Or maybe there will be, you know, to bend it and break it maybe. So let's see how this goes. I think this will work pretty good. And going through my mess of stuff, I'm going to pick up some of my random wood that I'll use for this from our really nice wood storage rack. We could take 16 footers or something like that, or maybe 20, it went all the way out to the roof before, but now I had to modify it for under 14 feet. If you're interested in how we made this, I have some plans for it. I can make a video explaining the whole thing. Let me know in the comments. So, That'd be hilarious. I'm sure this won't work. No. Eh, worth a shot. Yes. Okay, now I'm gonna let this side down. Those four wheels can hold a thousand pounds and it's only holding half the weight. So it should be fine to leave it in this orientation now. See what happens. All right. If you see here, this is starting to fail. So what I'm gonna do is put something under it quick so I can get further in. I'm certainly doing things the pallet is not designed to do. Things are popping. Don't think too much about that. Okay, in theory, this is gonna roll now. I'm gonna let this side down. Okay, I think I'm successful. I think she's up, let's see if she rolls. She sure does. Still heavy, but she'll move now. And this works out really well how I have it uh, this way because this part will go back against the wall over there. So I'll be able to get the, the dollies out easily. All right. Ah, easier. Okay, well, before I put it all down, though I guess it really shouldn't matter, I'm just gonna plug it in to see if it works. And in theory, something, nothing should blow up right now. Uh, where's the on-off switch on this thing? I should really learn that. 
magnetic starter somewhere. Uh, there it is. Okay. Nothing should happen, I think. Oh. Uh, maybe the other way. Okay. Now it should turn on when I do this. It's not terribly loud. This is me talking at a totally normal level. Now this is me talking at a higher level to compensate for it. It's all blowing out the front right now because there's an auto drain. But it's making compressed air, so that's good. The last thing to install is this thing. It's an auto drain. What this does is whatever you set it to, it will drain every once in a while. So it'll just squirt the, the water that condensates at the bottom out. So that'll be really nice to have. But I will do that after I have this thing on the ground because it seems to turn on. What I want to be careful of right now is to not get this kind of stuck in between. I know it was further out than this, but let's see what happens here. So I want to pull the dollies out, but then also be able to get this thing out. Yeah, see, a little stuck here, but I can get that out. I cleared it just enough. Now this will be out of the way and I can move everything and just enough. See, the, if I do it too, too good half-ass, I won't do it right. Well, there's not enough room to work. I know, there's not enough room in my welding area. It needs not to be better. Room to work here. I have enough room. There's not it's enough room for on. you to come in. Yeah, turned it on. Works. I put this, one, put this one over further because that way you can bang it that way and it might be enough to make it come down. See what? I put this board over this way more so you can smack it with a hammer because when it comes down, it's going on an angle. I, I, I got it. I know. The, the one side is harder than the other. This side will be easier. I, Dad, I did this. Okay. Stop. Okay. I know what you're telling me. The problem is I can't put it too far out or this board breaks. I have, there's a middle ground. No, but it almost did. So just let me do it. I got it. You can take that and plug it in, Dad. Really not that loud. Okay, now let's see if it works. No blowing out. Everything is tight. Come on, baby. So far so good, I don't hear anything. It's building pressure. And this is a classic way to check for leaks. Uh, basically, it's just water with uh, dish soap in it. So I'll spray all the fittings and see if I see bubbles. I think it's working. It's already at like 60 or 65 PSI. It hasn't been on very long. Uh, you know, 120 gallon tank. That's uh, building pressure quick. Oh, that's 
terribly loud. It says you put the juice back in. Hundred and forty PSI it stopped at. So it's I think hundred and sixty or something, so I'll have to see if there's a setting that modifies that. Now I'm curious why that still runs. I'm not sure yet. Oh, it might actually be the continuous run. There's a continuous run function on this thing. Uh, so that basically it's not starting and stopping when you're gonna be just using and using and using air. I'm sure there's a switch somewhere for that. What's really interesting, notice the difference in sound. That's actually, the, the pump, that's the pump just running. It's really not that loud. But what makes air compressors so loud is actually the air intake. And what happens is from it pulling in that air, it's a very noisy process, just like the purge, same idea. Um, so it's sucking it in really fast and it's making all that noise. So this thing actually has like a, essentially a intake muffler uh, they call it whisper something or other, and um, that's what keeps it so relatively quiet to what you normally think of for an air compressor. Now, let's see if it actually blows air. All right, I'm going to turn it off until I figure out how to turn off the continuous function. That's good. Oh, I do hear a leak now. It's actually from the factory I have a leak. So I actually hear it over here somewhere. It should bubble somewhere. hear it, I don't see it. I feel it. Oh no. Oh God. There's a freaking, the tank has a hole in it. Oh God. I seem to have bought a piece of shit. Now, let me pause here for a minute. This is me from the future, months later, well after everything has been resolved. Obviously, this situation really sucks, and no one wants to spend a bunch of money to get a dud of a product. At this point in time, I'm just comically disappointed because there have been a number of tiny little goofs in starting the process of buying this compressor from this company. First off, there really isn't much about them on the internet. But the videos and blog posts you do find about them are positive, besides some gaffe the CEO had with some keyboard warriors years ago after just how made in the USA their compressors are. I had been suggested this brand by a local air filtration company that had heard good things about them and overall the product had lots of extra features the big boys like Ingersoll Rand didn't have at this kind of price point. Plus, I like the fact that this company was doing what they could to be made in the USA. When I called them, someone always picked up and their staff was super helpful and easy to work with, so even with all the hiccups, I'm still here and mildly annoyed, but ultimately I already know this company is going to do right by me. Even as this small disaster gets even worse, which will be covered in the conclusion of the compressor saga, I am a satisfied customer. In the end, after everything's been resolved. I have to imagine I'm a freak outlier on these compressors considering the internet is not littered with similar experiences. So don't discount these guys as an option because since getting everything resolved, the compressor I'm using now seems to be working well enough. The true measure of a company isn't about everything going right, it's about how the company handles it when everything goes wrong. Eaton Compressor did everything right, so I gotta give them a lot of credit for how they handle everything. Plus. Murphy's Law applies heavily to me, so take my experience with a grain of salt.
quite an obvious air leak when you look at it. Well, this is not what I was expecting to happen. The freaking tank has a hole in it. Uh, somebody didn't check their welds when they did it and had a real nasty end to their, their weld. Probably it's done automatically with the machine and it, it stopped at the end and it would be real obvious for a person. And I guess they never pressure tested these things. I don't know what the hell the deal is, but it has a leak in it. I got to write a hold of my sales guy. We'll see what happens here. That is a major problem. Totally fixable, but I'm not paying for it. I already paid for the thing and it's got a freaking hole in it. Brand new. Terrible. ASME certified air tank manufactured in USA. I'm disappointed, America.